Hi, it's Mark Finch here. I'm just back from Free University in the Second International Fascia Research Congress. And here are some of my personal highlights from the week. We're at uh, Free University in Amsterdam at the Second International Fascia Research Conference. Looking forward to four days of uh, lots of scientific gems and hopefully some clinical applications. With 32 presenters over four days, it was always going to be a lot of information. And for most of us, what we wanted to get out of it was some clinically relevant information. For me, there were three categories of take-home messages. Facial architecture, strain transmission, and information about the superficial or areola tissues. So let's start with the fascial architecture. And for many of us, the highlight of the Congress was a presentation by Dr. Yap van der Waal. Um, he's a gross anatomist and he encourages us to look at the architecture of the whole fascial system rather than considering it in parts. His ideas really challenged uh, the commonly held beliefs about the relationship between ligaments and muscles and he encourages us to try and understand where the fascia should be sliding and where it should be transferring strain. My best moment was uh, Jan Yap van der Waal and the idea that the ligaments, that the, that the muscles are linked in sequence between two ligaments. I think the highlight uh, came on the second day with uh, Jaap van der Waal. And he was kind of quite paradigm shifting, I guess, rather than viewing things in terms of a parallel in arrangement, they're in a series in arrangement in terms of um, structures around a joint. And the sweet thing about that is that the ligaments can be dynamically stabilizing the joint no matter what the angle of the joint. In these two images from Dr. van der Waal, we can see how interconnected the fascia is around the elbow and how the muscles are in fact in a series arrangement with the ligaments rather than a parallel arrangement. Another highlight for me in terms of the fascial architecture was a presentation by a physiotherapist from, from South Africa called Willie Forey. He was talking about the variability of the fascia in the thigh. So he was talking about the fascia lata and in some places in the leg it has one layer, in some places it has two layers, in some places it has three layers. Some places it's really firmly adhered to the underlying muscles and in some places it's floating freely above it. So it's kind of a bit crude that we just have one technique to treat that whole structure other than being intelligent about um, the fascial anatomy of it and the potential for how it's transferring strain and what its functional task is. So it seems very important to understand the architecture of the fascial system more clearly, both to understand the function, but also for the therapist to apply their release techniques in a more precise way to get the greatest benefit possible. The second category that was of interest to me at this Congress was that of fascial strain transmission. There were some interesting presentations from Dr. Hying's group and also from Dr. Kawakami uh, in the field of strain transmission. Most of this information is in regards to the lower leg and a lot of it follows on from what was presented at the first fascia research conference in 2007. So it seems to be fairly clear that there is a non-linear strain transmission through most myofascial structures. The force transmission is probably quite different from what we think and certainly can't be viewed as uh, force into one end of a muscle equals the same force at the end of the tendon. They get transmitted uh, in a non-linear fashion through the fascia and through, through the tissue in general. Was that the mechanical strain transfer not only happens inside the muscle but between muscles and they change from the proximal end to the distal end. A different way of of looking at how you view the tissues under your hands and how they're being loaded. As Matt mentioned, it's really important to understand the strain transfer um, through the fascia because it really changes the way that we understand the fascial tissue from a clinical standpoint. Once again at this Congress there was a lot of uh, information about the areola tissue uh, following up from the Congress in 2007. Much of the research coming from Dr. Helen Langevin's group and it really illuminated how important the areola or the loose packed connective tissue is both in terms of function and in terms of pain. So there was a lot this time about how significant the superficial, the 
areola layer, um, how structural that is, how it can stiffen up, how it can change in response to strain and manipulation, and how it's innovated. That was another big piece too, hey? In my own practice is to have a look at the, the fascial system more, and I've realised now from this conference how active it is, active in its uh, pain production abilities, yeah. active in its torque production abilities. The fascia is so variable in, in different places that we really need to start treating the tissue as um, a different tissue in different parts of the anatomy, not just as the fascial tissue as a whole organ. And I think that's what's starting to happen as we gain more insight into the structure of the fascial system and its function. The benefit of these understandings for the therapist is that we can be more precise with our intervention and therefore be more effective. If you'd like to find out more about the Fascia Research Congress, it's fasciacongress.org. The next one is coming up in 2012 in Vancouver. Another valuable resource on the web is fasciaresearch.com where you can find much of the latest research that's been published. And if you'd like to find out about courses that I teach and how to make a lot of this scientific information relevant for the clinician and integrate it into your practice, it's markfinch.ca or at finchmark on Twitter.